Hello there, it's been a while. Yes, it's uh, Friday, 27th of July. July is almost over, but 2.8 is not. It's actually still in alpha state. It means that it focuses mainly on fixing crashes, fixing, like making the software stable enough and then continue to like actually make it work with more hardware and everything, but mainly to get it stable for production. The, remember the team of Spring Open Movie Project are working here at the Institute every day working with Blender 2.8. So it is getting improved and fixed and yes, things are happening. And in the meantime, the um, UI team, also known as <laughs> Willem and myself, uh, William is focusing on getting the call for content matcaps reviewed and selecting uh, which ones are the ones that are going to ship with Blender. So for the time being, there is this is uh, the current uh, selection as of two days ago. But um, next week, uh, maybe Monday or early next week, there will be uh, like a selection for the ones that are going to ship with Blender. In 2.7, there's like 24 matcaps. In, in, in 2.8, we don't really need that many matcaps because now the matcaps are mixed with the colors of your scene. You can have a single color or you can mix it with the color or random colors. So the possibilities are way more. If you have like a whitish matcap, you can combine it and make it the color that you want. Also, you can flip the matcaps now um, within Blender, that that's that feature has been there for a while now. So if you have a matcap, you can flip it. So it's like having two matcaps, right? the same with the brightness on either side. So uh, there is more options now and custom matcaps, you can make your own. So really maybe Blender doesn't need to ship with so many or like 80, like other softwares do. I think the selection would be nice to have like a variation, but once it's, they're selected, I'm going to show them in a different video. The other call for content that is happening is the workspaces. This is been done like oh, what, 15 days, I think more. It feels like way more <laughs> 15 days ago that we made a call for content so people can contribute their way of working and set up a workspace. So some very interesting discussions have been going on here. And there is a, some of the, the workspaces have been pre-selected. So I'm moving those that I think are they're handy into the first blog post and I'm just basically testing them myself. So for example, I went through a few of them, um, four or five of them. And uh, this one, for example, is what I think it would be nice to have for uh, modeling. So it basically it's a one big viewport without a timeline, which is a different thing from Blender. Blender usually ships with a timeline. And um, I think it's better to not have it so you can give more, um, you can make it, you can make people discover it discover the other um, workspaces. So if it's like, yeah, to make animation, then you go to animation. And then if you want to do shading and once they are set, I don't want to talk too much, too many, too much about it because if they're, they're gonna change anyway and uh, they're gonna be polished over time, but just to, sh to tell you that we're working on it. So the scripting is a very interesting one. It's like a one big, <laughs> um, uh, one, big editor for editing the text, the console, the info, and shading. It's, uh, it's being worked on. Um, the main thing is that the viewport is in um, look dev mode. So it means that it's previewing. If you're using Cycles, it's gonna preview in Eevee. If you're using Eevee, it's Eevee. Anyway, but it means that it can be slow. It can be start compiling the shaders and everything. So I don't know if it should be like by default once you once you um, open Blender because it can be slow in big scenes. Or it could tell you beforehand. I mean, there are, there are things that can be done. Then there's the UV editing and then there is uh, the, um, the UV editing is mainly just the editor for editing that. So I think uh, I managed to crash my Blender, no? Yes. No, it's probably still switching. So what I'm gonna do is just open another Blender because you can open as many Blenders as you want. So this Blender, um, this is the default. Yes, I, as you can see, there's no workspaces because they're not 
there yet, and they're going to be added all at once. And one of the workspaces that was suggested, it's the Gris Pencil. So a whole workspace just dedicated to to the animation. This was designed by the uh, Gris Pencil team. This image was sent by Matias Mendiola, and it's really like the 3D one, but mainly focused on the viewport. One thing, though, that they requested that is actually a very good point is that the, when you're doing Gris Pencil, usually your, your default strokes are black. And the background is some sort of like paper-like background, or at least brighter than the usual. So when you're doing 3D, having a dark background, it's pretty normal, right? But when you're actually doing <laughs> a uh, Gris Pencil animation, 2D animation, you want to have a brighter background, right? Like some sort of paper, like that's pretty normal. So the feature was requested and one of the developers was awesome enough to make it. So thank you, Jorun Bakker, for making it. Basically now we have a option for the background. Before it used to be a toggle for the world background. Now it's more like a, you can select uh, from three options. One is the theme. Basically, it's just whatever you choose in your theme. So that doesn't change. Then there is the world background, which is the one that is used in the world. <laughs> so you can choose if you're using notes here in the world, viewport display, and you can change your color. So this is per world. So it means that all the editors are going to have it. And if I go to another workspace, like let's go to modeling workspace, it's um, as long as I have, ah, I don't have the setting here, world is going to use it and it's shared. But this new option is called viewport. So you basically choose a color for your viewport, which is very nice because it means that you can have per viewport colors. So you can have one with a color and it's all the same um, data, the same everything. It's just for that one viewport. So you can have one with the actual background, like if you have the camera view, for example, and then one where you draw or would you do anything really. So this comes in very handy for specific um, specific workflows. So yes, thank you Jeroen for adding that. It was added today and also was reviewed by Clement Foucault, developer of Eevee. And it's pretty, pretty neat. So that you see that's how workspaces are bringing more development to the table. So it means that in uh, the default workspace for Gris Pencil, which is still not merged, still not, uh, just saying, don't, don't try go and look for it because it's not gonna be there. The default workspace is gonna be wider. So each workspace can have its own color background, which is very nice. The other change that I wanted to mention is before finishing this video is that I uh, actually wanna show that we, um, uh, we, we. I didn't do anything really. The team for Spring is requesting many things from Blender 2.7, right? For compositing, for everything. And um, there's a few things that were not added uh, yet regarding the use in Blender 2.7. For example, when you have um, uh, render layers, you have this um, concept here, which is the layer, the scene. So which this is which layer do you have active? This is which layers belong to that render layer. This is exclude to not render it. And then mask, which is like making a, a mask, like a holdout of it. So it's a similar concept and it wasn't implemented yet in Blender 2.8. Now it is temporarily implemented. So what does it mean? Well, long story short, the final version of it is gonna use the a more advanced system called the overrides system. So this is already being worked on. It's in 2.8. It's one of the targets of Blender 2.8. So yes, it's going to be there, but that is that that's the, the final implementation. So for the time being, the implementation is just done the, the same way the exclusion works and uh, used to work until, until now. So for example, let's say I have this cube, let's add a torus. Let's move it to a new collection. Let's make collection torus. And then this cube, I'm gonna sh move it to the cube collection. So I have one with stuff, one with torus, one with the cube. So let's say if I have a plane, I just want to show you, 
So this is my uh, view layer, my render layer from the, the old name. And if I, let, let's go to cycles because this is a cycles thing, by the way, cycles here. So if I enable this, I see everything because all my um, collections are visible in this view layer. But until today, you what you could do is go to view layer and then exclude. So but basically it would make it invisible, like completely not visible. So it's not get it doesn't get compute or anything at all. But that's a problem because sometimes you want to hide the collections for like the the to, to mask out something so or hide it from the camera but make it still uh, cast a shadow for example or affect the lighting on your scene. So uh, what you can do now is right click on it and then so choose either hey my camera died nice. Now you get the radio experience. <clears throat> Next time I should charge the battery. So, all right. So right click and then you can choose set holdout or set indirect only. So for example, set holdout makes a mask. So if I had the film transparency on, then I will see the background right here. So let's see if I try and um, render this thing somewhere here. Let's see. If I render, then I have alpha here because I set it as holdout. And if I set it as indirect only, or I clear the holdout actually, and I set maybe the torus as indirect only, then it means that only I can still select it, select the object inside, and I can see the outline, which is awesome because in 2.7 you couldn't do this. So here, if I move it around, you can see it's still. <laughs> still affecting is the shadow and if I select it and I bet if I add a material that is emitting there you go so yes <laughs> it is affecting but it's invisible it's like going to the object uh, and changing the settings from here but for the whole collection so that that really brings a lot more um, options and flexibility in our, when doing the uh, compositing so this is temporary, so just to get off, <laughs> if you have to work on it and do compositing right now, you can use it, but in the future, as I said, it would use the, um, the, the override system, so it's much better. And it feels so weird to not, not talk to you and do stuff, like see you in the eyes, okay. Anyway, I will close this and then just, I will see you again in the next, <laughs> that's so weird. So awkward to not talk to, how can people make videos and not talk to the, anyway, sorry. I will see you again, hopefully if I manage to charge my camera in the next video. <laughs> Ciao.